So Sunlu just sent over their uh, filler dryer S4 for us to test out. They also sent over some uh, high strength filaments. I got one roll each of carbon fiber reinforced nylon, PETG, ASA, and ABS. So we're going to get this thing unboxed, set up, and I'm going to throw all four of those filaments in there. And then we're going to test them out over on the FL Sun here and the Flash Forge over there. And let me know what you guys think about enclosing the P1P. I've been going back and forth about it for a while now. I've got four A1 minis here that can print the most of my products out. It would be really nice to have another enclosed machine. And I've got plenty of printers to print out the different parts for the P1P. So let me know what you think. My thought was to do a Mountain Maker logo on the side, do a custom panel, do the big MM on the side there. But maybe that's just a waste of time when this thing already works. Maybe I should just buy a P1S and call it a day. All right, all right. Got all our instructions and some PTFE tubes inside of it. Got to give them props for this. Right from the get-go, this is what's something I'm noticing. They've got PTFE slots not only on the top side, but also on each of the sides there. So depending on where you're feeding it, like if you're feeding to a printer over here and a printer over here, that's a neat idea. All right, let's go get this set up over on the bench here. Now this would obviously be more beneficial if this was next to some of the printers, but I've got something coming for this area in a couple weeks, hopefully, that will make this closer to some of the printers. Inside of the package, we've got some little silicone plugs to plug up the holes you're not using or all of them if you're just using it as a dryer. There's also some smaller Teflon tube here if you don't want to use these longer pieces that they've included. And these are pretty long, but you can obviously cut them in half and use the rest of it uh, in one of the other slots. That way, the stuff that's coming out of the machine is not exposed to the environment. Let's get this thing plugged in and start getting it warmed up. So when you first turn it on, you'll end up pressing this button there. PLA, polycarbonate, nylon, ABS, TPU, PETG, those settings seem a little bit low. We are gonna set it for nylon. Set. We'll do a time. How far can we go? Ow. That makes sense. 99 hours is the maximum time over here on the S4 filler dryer. In case you were wondering. Uh, we don't need to go anywhere near that close. I don't know what the difference between mode 1 and mode 2 is. I guess I could look inside of the user guide. Mode 1 is time control mode, shut down after countdown, and mode 2 is humidity control mode. That's pretty cool. The uh, mode 2 is kind of like uh, sustainable. So you can go here and say keep it at or below, maybe like set it there. We give it mode 2, give it a time. And then it will dry for that amount of time. But if this ever gets above 35 or 37 percent, it will start drying it again. That is warming up quick. And you can see the individual uh, tubes there and open up each side. Can you get inside of there? Yeah, it's super dark. But you can. Let that warm up a little bit. Let's go get some of those filaments unboxed. All right, so I already took them out of the box. What they sent over was a spool of their black PETG. They've got a spool of black ASA, 900 grams, another spool of black ABS, and a one kilogram spool of some PA6 carbon fiber, some nylon carbon fiber. That's what I've been printing out with over on the S1 Pro. I've been having phenomenal luck with it. Get each of these opened up out of the spool. And so far, I'm just going to use this as a dryer. I'm just going to take out the little plugs here and plug up each of these holes on top to keep most of the heat inside. Cool. All right. This guy in here. Next up, ASA. Then we've got ABS. Finally, PETG. And now we wait. So obviously I've printed with PETG before, as many of you probably have as well. But I've never printed with ABS and I 
recently just printed with ASA for my first time over on the Adventure 5M Pro. So I'm curious to see how the ABS performs. Is it similar? Is it harder to print? I'm also curious to see if it actually works over on the S1 Pro because I wasn't able to get any ASA to actually print or stick to the build plate rather on the S1 Pro. After going back and forth for about three hours with one of their technicians the other night, I was able to get a successful ASA print, uh, but it did take longer than the Flash Forge, so I definitely think there still has some tuning to do. So I just wanna give some updated thoughts on the S1 Pro real quick, because while it can't print ASA very well, at least not right now, this is carbon fiber reinforced nylon, and this is the first print that I threw in there. I took a profile from the Flash Forge that they had in for their uh, PA6 carbon fiber, and I threw it in, calibrated it for the FL Sun, and the first print came out with uh, absolutely no issues at all. So it's becoming one of my new favorite filaments, and that Benchy was done in 25 or 26 minutes, so it's a little slower when it comes to printing higher temp things like ASA, you know, nylon, stuff like that, but it's still quick. So would I recommend the S1 Pro to like a brand new person to 3D printing? No. I love the machine, but I also really do enjoy tinkering with machines. So if you're somebody who does enjoy the tinkering part of it, and you're really looking for rapid prototyping, you don't mind spending a little time tuning some profiles and dialing in some settings, the S1 Pro is a phenomenal machine. But if you're somebody who just wants to buy a 3D printer to 3D print and make stuff without doing any, you know, sort of, I guess I'll call it uh, groundwork or figuring things out how they work first. So I think you'd probably be best in that situation to stick to another manufacturer. And one of my favorite new printers, and this is not because they sent it to me. Uh, in fact, when I was first looking at 3D printers, Flash Forge would often come up and for whatever reason, I just didn't think it was gonna be a great printer. However, this thing hasn't failed at a single print that I've thrown at it. ASA, carbon fiber nylon, PLA, PETG. Uh, I gotta try ABS next, but so far there isn't a single thing that I've thrown in this machine that hasn't worked with it the first print. And the results are, you know, phenomenal. So that machine there is about the same cost as the P1P, but it's fully enclosed. They also offer one that is similar to the P1P where it's got that open frame design that's like, sometimes on sale for 299 bucks. It's got a slightly smaller build plate than the P1P does. It's uh, the same size over here as the uh, uh, Creality. So if you're familiar with the K1, uh, the Ender 3, it's got the same size 220 millimeter build plate that those machines do. And in a couple weeks here, Flash Forge is releasing their 85X, which is a four color multicolor system. And that printer is releasing at $499. There's no traditional AMS unit on that machine, all of the spools get loaded in from the side, or you could even put them in a filler dryer like that and feed them up through the uh, multicolor system. So when that thing gets released, they will be sending one over here so we can test that out as well. I'm really loving the Flash Forge machines, and I'm thinking I'm gonna buy a couple of the regular Adventure 5Ms just to have in here to print because they just, they're fast and they have great print quality. 15 minutes so far. We're up to 62 Celsius inside of there. That's pretty neat. So speaking of ASA on the S1 Pro, this was printed out with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, 0.26 millimeter layer height, and no supports. So up here, obviously, where it hit the overhangs, that's kind of a tough one. But I mean, this was first slice, no supports, no brim on this machine. And this is what we got out of the FL Sun. Quality around the actual print itself, not bad except this one needed a 10 millimeter brim around the base of it and the overhangs a little bit worse looking. So I definitely think their ASA settings need a little bit of tuning. Overall, again, it's not a bad print. I mean, look at it. Look at that. Maybe tweak your filament settings, do some calibrations and stuff like that. And I'll say it again with PLA or PETG for that matter, this thing is twice as fast as any of the other machines that I have in here with the same quality. I can get a Benchy done in 10 minutes. Now it's a friggin' Benchy, so who cares? The ASA though, I'm really having some hard times with it. Again, I'm going back and forth with some of the techs over at FL Sun to work on getting that dialed in. Carbon fiber nylon prints amazing on it, but ASA, not sure yet. We're gonna throw some ABS in here once it dries out though, because I wanna see if that, you know, plays around a little bit different. I think maybe they've had some more time to tune those settings. So we'll find out, I guess. So things have definitely slowed down in terms of uh, Etsy orders going into the new year. I've also shut off a lot of ads and removed a lot of the things that uh, weren't selling. 
So there, there's plenty of stores on Etsy who do cookie cutters, things like that. And so I'm going to leave that to them. There's, if I was doing only cookie cutters and could dedicate time to just producing cookie cutters, yeah, maybe it would be worth it for me. But to sell one here or there for $5 just isn't worth it at this stage. So I'm just getting the packing slips organized with their shipping labels, and then I can go pick the orders out. Germany. There and there. All right, so we've got three dumbbells for you and pack of two yellow. These guys on there. This is just CA glue, otherwise known as super glue or cyan or acrylate, that I can spray an activator. I spray it on there, and when I place it in here, you get about two to three seconds to uh to hold it down and then it's pretty much dried in place like ready to go essentially i will give it one more spray usually just to dry up any of the glue that's around the outside but this stuff works amazing the stuff i'm using right now is uh medium viscosity from Sciafix. Uh, and the activator is from Adhesive Guru. I usually buy these as a set with the CA glue included, but it is pretty thick for using with the 3D printed parts, so I have only been buying the activator from them. I'm gonna get the rest of these items packaged up. There are links down in the description below for all the shipping materials that I'm using today. These bubble bags are different from the ones I normally use, and they aren't my favorite, so I will link to the one I usually buy. They were out of stock during the Christmas rush, and I was able to get these fairly quick but they aren't quite as good as the other ones. So I just want to show you inside of Orca here because I think some people got the wrong impression in the last video. This machine still does print quality prints. If I go into strength, we've got three walls, four top, four bottom layers, 10% gyroid infill. These are our speed settings, right? Let's slice it. This is ABS using their, uh, you know, FL Sun stock ABS profile, 22 minutes. We're going to go print this, call it, ABS, 22 minutes, 24 seconds. Let's upload it. All right, so I've got glue on the bed. Unfortunately, I can't get ABS or ASA to stick to the bed without glue. So we've got a 22 minute, 24 second ABS Benchy. And so the way that I have this set up now, I've modified the G code file so it will heat up to 100 C on the bed first or whatever the bed temps are set for when you sliced it. Once it does that, it'll bring the nozzle up to temperature. I'm gonna close the door. Uh, once it heats up the bed here, it's gonna heat the nozzle up to temperature. Their stock G code, for whatever reason, tells it to heat up the nozzle and the bed at the same time. And what that does is it causes it to just ooze out of the, the nozzle there. Cause this bed takes a while to heat up. The nozzle heats up really quick. So you'd have your nozzle just sitting there at 280 degrees Celsius while it takes your bed, you know, two minutes to heat up to 100. So. Changing that fixed the issue completely. That's weird. Just 22 minutes, 24 seconds, but 27 minutes on the clock. That must have something to do with the time it's taking it to heat up. I didn't realize it actually accounted for that in there. We shall see at the end though. And the other difference with this is I've also calibrated the bed mesh for 100 degrees Celsius before I ran this print. So I have two different printer profiles for the FL Sun. Because the machine is really meant for rapid prototyping and just you know, getting parts out, tweaking designs, making sure things look the way they need to look before you actually print the quality part on the slower settings. There is no bed mesh calibrate that happens like on bamboo where it goes around and it taps the five points on the bed and then does a bed mesh if it's, you know, off of those five points. It basically just heats up the bed and the nozzle and starts printing. What that does though, is if you're switching from materials like PLA, which normally prints on the bed around 60, to materials like this ABS that prints at 100, your bed is going to warp, it's gonna heat up, expand more. So you need to recalibrate that bed mesh. And ideally on a machine like this, you really should be recalibrating the bed mesh every time if you want the best possible quality prints. But for me, I'm using this machine more for rapid prototyping, like I mentioned before. So you design a part, a brand new part doesn't exist. You wanna see, does it fit around this two by four? For instance, these things are to hold your parallel clamps. So if I wanna design this piece and see, does it fit inside of here, but I don't wanna, you know, take a couple hours on the P1P, I can do it in, you know, half the time over on the FL Sun. 
they may not come out as good looking, but you're also not really looking to get them good looking at that point. You're just trying to see if the design is actually something that works, if that makes any sense. Just like there is on any 3D printer inside of your slicer, you've got different settings. You've got speed settings, you've got quality settings, you've got things for strength. Do you need thinner layer lines? Do you need thicker layer lines? So it's really all about tweaking it. It's not just a press the button and go like it is, you know, if you're printing through things like Maker World. This machine is definitely more geared towards an advanced user. I really don't want the drafts in there, but you can't see anything. So this isn't any good, is it? In case you can't tell, we are about two minutes into printing. All right, I'm going to close the door to give this thing the best possible chance at success. It is ABS. We'll come back in a little bit. All right, we are 46% complete, uh, 11 minutes in. And we'll take a look at it fully when it comes off the build plate. Again, this is ABS using FL Sun's stock recommended settings. All right, 23 minutes, 98%. All right, printing completed in a total of 24 minutes. Let's just get a look at it while it's on the build plate. A little bit of ringing on the side here. Let's see if you can get better light from inside of here. So obviously we use glue on the build plate. And we've got a little bit of ring in there. Again, it's ABS. It does shrink. And a little bit on the back side there. You can make your own judgments. It's obviously hard to see from video. Like I can look at it in person and go, this is, you know, a good quality part for 24 minutes on a machine, especially out of uh, ABS. But, you know, cameras always make things look worse than they actually are. So, I mean, this is PETG printed on the Bamboo Lab. Like I said, I could sit here and try to convince you this is, a, you know, the best looking Benchy in the world printed out of ABS in 24 minutes. But at the end of the day, you're going to make your own judgments and decisions anyway. So, you know, this is a Benchy printed out on the Bamboo Lab P1P behind me. And this is the FL Sun. This one took just over an hour on the P1P. Obviously, it's got the Benchy on Benchy, so we're going to kind of discount that, but it still has to go up this far anyway, so not really adding a whole lot of extra time. And this one took 24 minutes out of ABS, so it prints at about half the speed that PLA does. At the end of the day, it's not a printer that's going into my shop when you purchase it. It's something that's going into your shop. So if you don't think it's the right fit for you, don't buy it. If you think it's something that will, you know, up your game or change the pace of how you output products, buy it. If you'd like it, there's a link in the description below. If not, there's also a link in the description below for some of the Bamboo Lab machines, as well as the Flash Forge. Or if you're somebody who's a little crazy and enjoys the Creality machines for whatever reason, there's links to those too. And now that I've got my settings dialed in for some of the more advanced filaments here on the FL Sun S1 Pro, we're going to be doing some prototyping and new design work. I've had a couple of you leave some suggestions down in the comments below on things that I should design and print just based off of stuff that I've been doing here in the shop. So be on the lookout for some of those videos coming up here in the next couple of days. Be sure to check it out down in the description below. I'll have a link for it once it comes out. In the next video, I've got a whole bunch of stuff to go out to Amazon. So I'm going to take you through the process in Amazon Seller Central for creating a new listing and shipping out some of the stuff that we already have listed. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you won't miss out when I upload it. And I hope everybody has a successful and productive week. Until next time, take care, folks. That's pretty neat. Uh, one took just over an hour. You know, the P1P one.
The first video I'm going to do is on, uh, you don't need to.